Welcome to worship today with Holy Love Lutheran Church. We're glad to have you here. This is a time to reconnect with God and remember who we are as God's beloved children. We begin our service with the assurance of God's forgiveness as we confess our sins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like, like lost, lost sheep, we have, have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Beloved, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But by the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with us his wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are his. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the Let us pray. Lord of life, in the, the gift, gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading of the eighth psalm. O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes, to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet. You have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts 
of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. And when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it's to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's sermon text comes from the first and second chapter of Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many ways, and various ways, by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is a reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now, God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? or mortals that you care for them. You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside of their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjugation to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I know it's a little different this week, right? The preaching today is on Hebrews. It's not on the gospel. And this is done intentionally. The gospel in Mark today is short. But last week, remember, we talked about the wide community. Jesus said, whoever is not against us is for us. And it opened up the reality that our community in Christ is larger than we think it is. Because it's not just about people choosing to be part of something. It's anyone who is not against God, Jesus says to his 12 best friends. Anyone who's not against God is for us. To put it in simple terms, the Bears, Chicago Bears, play the Detroit Lions today. So that means all you Broncos fans are on the Bears team because you're not against the Bears. See that logic? So with this wider community, this larger idea that it's not just an individualistic, here is our team, here is our narrow view, we're faced with the reality of what now? What do we do with this wide community that we've been exposed to in Christ? Well, to understand a little better, we need to understand, too, who the letter to the Hebrews was written to. So it's a letter to the Hebrews, sometimes called the Epistle to the Hebrews. Epistle is just a weird, fancy title for letter. 
But the author of Hebrews, who many suspected to be the Apostle Paul, but modern scholarship has said they don't think it's Paul, this book of the Bible was written to Jewish Christians, people who had grown up in the Jewish culture and had come to faith in Christ as the Messiah. So they're stuck with this, are we Jewish or are we part of this new Christian movement? But specifically in their time period, they're faced with persecution, the really nasty persecution of death and torture for being part of this new religion, Christianity. The author is addressing the temptation that these Jewish Christians are facing. They're tempted to go back to the old legalistic ways. If we go back to when it was all about sacrifices and we just had to follow the rule book very precisely, if we just had to do A and then do B and then do C and then God was happy with us, everything will be fine again. We won't be fearing for our lives. When in reality, remember, Christ comes to us and came to the whole world, and it's all about grace. It's not about what we do, because nothing we do is good enough for God, but it's about what Jesus has done on our behalf, that concept of grace. So the author is going back to the Hebrews and telling them, Hebrews being the Jewish Christians, and telling them, even if you try to go back to the old ways, the old ways were always about grace in the first place. Humans misunderstood it to be about X, Y, and Z, when really it was about what God has done on your behalf. It was never about what humans could do to please God. Now, to support this in the part that we read today, the author says, our ancestors have said this. The prophets of old have talked about this. The angels have said this. And it's unclear on if the author means messengers of God, which is what angel means, just a messenger, or if they're talking about heavenly beings, like the archangel Michael, for example, in our understanding. But the message that the prophets, the ancestors, and these messengers of God have said is that it's human's turn. It's humanity's turn to be in control, to take the lead on this. Not only are humans loved by God, but they are empowered by God to do God's work. Now, you might be thinking back to Genesis, right, and to the story of original sin and the first fall. Not autumn, but the fall of humanity. Remember in Genesis, God placed humans in charge, and then humans kept being in charge. And they said, you know what, I know God told us that we shouldn't take from that tree, but we're going to go take from that tree because we're in charge. We know better. And that was sin. That was working against God because it was no longer a partnership. It was humanity placing themselves above God. This temptation, this sin inclination continues throughout the rest of human history, even up to today. And that's why God became human in the form of Jesus Christ. God became human to show that, no, humans are not in charge. God is in charge. <laughs> and to show you that God became human to be with us in the world. But here's the hard part. Reality of humans, we stink. And I don't mean literally, which we do, but we are just not, we're not fun. <laughs> we're full of sin. We're full of nastiness towards one another and nastiness towards the world. That's why in the short gospel reading from Mark today, Jesus talks about kids. Kids in Jesus' time period were not intrinsically valued. Remember, there was a lot of child mortality, but kids in general were not valued for who they were. Instead, they were seen as a future investment. When they grow up, then they'll be valuable. But for right now, they're just kind of like a chore that we have to keep track of. But when they're grown-ups, then they'll have kids and continue on the family name and have their own money and all that stuff. So when Jesus says, let the little children come to me, it's this reality that, no, everyone is valued as they are. These kids are good to go. They are valued by God as well. 
in Jesus' time period, the kids would have been the stinkiest part of humanity. And they're welcomed by God. So now, my question for you, and the question that the Jewish Christians, the original, the original audience of Hebrews face, is Christianity a religion or a worldview? Is this new movement, is this new way of following Jesus as the Messiah a religion or a worldview? Let's define religion as an individual relationship to the divine or a group of people, specified people's relationship to the divine. Contrary to what a worldview is, worldview is how everything interacts. It's the ecology, the economy of the world, and I don't mean money. I mean the interconnectedness of everything that we have. Religion or worldview? As good Lutheran Christians, I hear you saying, yes, it's both. And you're right, yay. <laughs> because it's true. <laughs> Christianity is both our relationship to God and it's how we interact with the world at large. Not just our neighbors, but everything. Our animals, our cre the creation around us, the systems that are at work. Remember back in Genesis, Sin impacted everything. Prior to the recording of um, humans overrunning their station in Genesis, humans taking from the tree that they weren't supposed to eat from, there was no indication that animals even ate each other. Humans certainly didn't eat any meat in this time. There wasn't even a rain until the flood of Noah. Everything in creation had what it needed to survive and thrive. Plants had what they needed. Humans had what they needed. Animals had what they needed. But with sin, everything fell apart. Animals ate each other. That's why in Revelation, there's all that imagery of the lion and the lamb laying down together because the lion no longer needs to eat the lamb. Because Jesus saved everything. As sin impacted everything, not just humans and God, but everything. So Jesus saved everything. Not just our individual relationship with God, not just our community's relationship with each other, but in John 3, 16, you know, the famous one, God so loved the world. It's really God so loved the universe. Not just Earth, the third rock from the sun, but the entire universe all the stars, all the things that we don't even know about, to the littlest atoms and subatomic particles. Humans stink. We are really sinful and problematic people. I think, if you'll remember with me, at the beginning of lockdown, back in March and April, there were all these reports that light pollution had gone down, air pollution had gone down, that the world itself, nature itself, was actually kind of healing a bit as humans were stuck at home in fear of catching coronavirus. And that kind of showed me how much humanity has affected our planet. When Jesus saved everything, it's not just about you and me. It's not about you and God. It's not about me and God. It's a wider, that wider community of whoever is not against us is for us, Jesus saying again. As Christians, as part of this religion and this worldview, we're part of something greater than ourselves, part of something greater than this one community here at Holy Love. We enter into a congregation of the world, with nature and all the systems of the world, rejoicing and praising God. Our work is not limited to Sunday morning prayers, but it's every day in every step, in our workplace, in our home life. Jesus has saved everything. So we respond with thanksgiving to God. Amen. Within, come forth wisdom to.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining with our siblings in Christ around the world, let us pray for our community and for the world at large. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this time together. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you, to understand more about you, and to grow in our faith. Lord, thank you for accepting our questions and encouraging us to wrestle with you. Continue to lead us in the path of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. God, we give you thanks for this community that we live in. Thank you for our teachers and our schools. Thank you for our hospital systems and all the people who work to keep our lives going. We ask that you would continue to bless them, give them safety and comfort, and help us to acknowledge the goodness we see in others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we pray for our leaders, internationally and nationally, and our local and community leaders. We ask that you would give them a servant's heart. Speak through them and give them wisdom in these times. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. God, we pray for all who have need in mind, in body, or in spirit. We pray today for Ron, for Angela, Jackson, and Tim, for Anne, and others that we name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. God, we give you thanks for the healing that you do in our lives. We especially want to offer thanks for the remission of cancer in Shirley. We pray that you would continue to heal her body and to heal our lives as well. Thank you for your work within us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. God, we give you thanks too for all who have gone before us in the faith. Continue to lead us on your path. May their examples inspire us to follow Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Trusting that you hear us and knowing that you care, we lay these prayers before your throne of grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another people in your household, people online, however you feel comfortable. At this point in the service, we give thanks to God for all he has given. We invite you to offer with thanksgiving and praise your continued contributions to Holy Love. You can make gifts of financial support through PayPal on our website, or you can send in your checks to our church office. We encourage you too to take part in our community at large. Donate your time, help out with our youth group, with our altar ministries, with other things going on here at church. Thank you. i 
Let us pray. God of abundance, you, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church here on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but would have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved of God, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Remembering, therefore, his good command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and, receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. United into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you.
Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please receive the benediction. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever for the greater world at whole. Amen. Throughout this life, I know that it's not all supposed to be easy, but there are times when it feels like I've had more than my share of the hardest things in life to bear. And yet I know that I am never alone. You are always by my side, walking with me, Lord. And through the hardest times, you lift me up and hold me in your hands. And I know that it is never just my footprints in the sand. When you decide my time on earth is through, you know I'll come home with you. But before I go, I would ask one thing more of you, Lord, and it's for the ones who love me so. Please let them know that they are never alone. You are always by their side, walking with them, Lord. And through the hardest times, you lift them up and hold them in your hands. They to know that it is never just their footprints in the sand. We all need to know that we're never alone. You are always by our side, walking with us, Lord. And through the hardest times, you lift us up and hold us in your hands. How sweet to know that it is never just our footprints in the sand. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.